G'day, Bomber fans. Well, the home and away season is now done for the women. The Bombers played their last game of the regular season against the Blues last night. We went into the game in ninth spot, needing a win to play finals, and a win is what we got. We are going to be playing September footy again, back-to-back -back for the girls, doing it a lot better than the boys are right now. So let's talk about this game of footy, how it transpired, uh, what it means for the uh, well, the final series. Uh, let's get into it. Quarter-by-quarter quarter recap. The first term was a really tense one. The Blues came to fight early, uh, peppering our goals. They kicked the first goal to lead. 8-0, which is when our captain, Bonnie Toogood, went down with an ankle injury. We did manage to bring the score back uh, thanks to a classy Amelia Radford set shot, but at quarter time it was announced that our captain was ruled out for the game, meaning we went into the first break with a deficit to overcome and without our best goal scorer. I was worried early, but the second quarter started with a bang. Uh, we struggled to score in the first, but we were all over the blues early in the second. Amy Gaylor slotted her first goal for the club to give us a lead, and just a minute or two later, Georgia Nanscorn kicked an absolute beauty from in close and personal. The blues stemmed the flow for a bit, but then we kicked our fourth for the game from Elise Gamble to make it comfortable. A Darcy Vessio set shot late gave them a sniff, but we were cruising in the second quarter. The third, uh, we won the game here, really. All we really needed to do was to stop the Blues from scoring, which we did. All they managed was the one behind, but on the flip side, we were punishing them up front as well. So Morecambe, Vote, and uh, Georgia G kicked goals to give us a 27-point lead at the end of the Premiership quarter, and it probably should have been more realistically. We missed a few really gettable opportunities in there. The game was won, so all we really needed to do was finish off strong and hopefully not suffer any more injuries. And the last quarter, it was a fun, no risk, no injury worries quarter of footy. Uh, the Blues kicked the first fairly early, but from there, we were yet again just cruising. We were dominating play. Uh, we got a couple of goals to our goalless forwards to give them a bit of confidence going into next week, which is good. Uh, Amber Clark and Dari Bannister both had almost nights for the most part, but walked away with majors, which helps. Uh, we ended the game very comfortably. We were winners by 36 points, uh, six goal winners in the end, meaning we not only win against our rivals, Carlton, which is always good, but we secured a spot in the top eight, meaning we are playing finals footy next week, which I'm going to talk about more at the end of the video. But first, let's talk about this game. How did we win it so comfortably? Well, we were clearly the better team going into the game. Uh, the ladder shows you that. Form shows you that. Uh, we always should have won this match. But something I will say, uh, to go out there and have... Uh, an almost goalless quarter early. Our star forward goes down at quarter time. I'm sat there thinking this could be tight and low scoring. If we won it, I thought it was going to be a grind at quarter time, but it was far from that in the end. Uh, Natalie Wood, hats off to her. She changed up our structure to give us so many options in the forward line and around the ground. Eight goals to two after quarter time. Uh, we had nine different goal scorers for the match. We piled on goal after goal without our two best marking targets on the ground. Remember, Steph Wales, unfortunately, was ruled out, which I'll get to in a bit. Uh, but, but yeah, in the end, I think we were just the cleaner team around the ground, which allowed us to be better up forward. We had all the footy. We, we were controlling it. We had over 100 more disposals, which is crazy. Almost 50 more kicks, 15 more inside 50s. That is always going to result in a win. Uh, 210 uncontested possessions to 126. That is, it's honestly pretty brutal. And the funny thing is we had over 100 more disposals, but less turnovers. So yeah, we just had more of the ball and we used it way better than them. And that allowed us to get more looks inside 50. It would have been a really hard game to watch if you're a Carlton fan. Despite us winning by so much, there are well, there's one big negative from this game. It's one pretty big one heading into finals. Our ruck situation, uh, so obviously Steph Wales went down with a knee injury really late in the game last week. We had our fingers crossed when we, my last video was out, but it was confirmed the next day that uh, she unfortunately did her ACL. So it's just a horrible injury for such a promising young player. Hopefully she recovers sooner rather than later so we can uh, see her playing footy next season. But this has left a massive hole for us in the short term in the ruck because she has been doing most of the tap work for us this season and last. Uh, giving our midfield a boost, and we discovered how important she was to the engine room this game. So we obviously dominated the match, but the midfield battle was actually won by the Blues. They had more clearances than us, they had two more, and it's because of the ruck dominance. We had Matilda Dyke in there as a backup. She tried her best to play her part, but the Blues won the hit-out count 51-9. to That is a, a massive worry heading into finals, because we're going to need to play better teams than the one we just beat. Carlton are, uh, no offence, but they're no good compared to the ones in the eight. So hopefully we find a way around this, but early signs without Wales are not good. It's going to be tough next week. Luckily, Prasparkis and Nance Gorn were reading the taps well enough for it to be uh, relatively a non-issue. Next week is going to be interesting. We're going to see how well we go under pressure uh, for our finals game. We don't know yet who we're playing. That's going to be decided after this video is out. No Wales will be tough. Hopefully, we learn more about Too Good's ankle soon. Uh, she didn't play out the game after quarter time, but it didn't look it didn't look horrible. Uh, hopefully, it's a slight tweak and she can play in an important final. If not, we'll certainly be on the back foot and definitely underdogs going to the game. But as it stands. Uh, just the season as a whole. It's hard not to be proud of the girls. Uh, we've had our, our fair share of injuries this year, our fair share of adversity. We started off the season with a brutal loss. Things look
looked uh, bleak, but uh, we had our backs against the wall. But here we are a few months later on the eve of finals, and we are involved. I would love it if the boys played with the same heart as the girls do. It's, it's certainly a lot easier supporting this team than the men's. And hopefully we can go one step further and claim a cheeky win ahead of schedule two before the men. Because realistically, uh, we're still a very young team to be playing September footy. We're only going to grow and get better from here. So to be in the better half of the ladder this early into our lifespan, because it's only our, what, third or fourth season in the AFLW, it, it's... It's been stressful, but it's been a fun season. It's great supporting this team. So uh, let's get on to the votes for the last time this home and away season, but they will continue during finals. One vote to Matty P, who was yet again awesome in the midfield. 25 touches, 14 kicks, uh, just a real force all night. Uh, two votes to Amy Gaylor. She was awesome, pushed up on that wing. 19 touches, a goal, seven intercept possessions. Uh, this kid is going to be an absolute star, I can tell. She's just so clean with ball and really building with confidence with each week she plays as well. Georgia Nanscott gets three votes, uh, which tells you how bloody good this team was because she could have easily been best on ground. She kicked goal of the day. She had nine clearances, 25 touches. She was just unstoppable and has been so consistent this year. Four votes to Georgia G. As she not only kicked a goal from her 22 touches, she directly assisted three others and had eight score involvements overall, the most on the ground. She was awesome against her old team, but in the end, the votes just have to go to Maddie Gay. What a star she is. 33 disposals, 25 kicks, nine interceptions, 740 meters gained, over 90% disposal efficiency. Uh, she has to be an Australian consideration now. Some unlucky to miss out. Best Keeney was great. Mia Bush and Vandaloon were really solid too. Uh, Jackie Vogt was a great target and Emily Radford was busy too. And now onto the overall tally. Alright, so Maddie Gay has made it really interesting up the top uh, with uh, potentially only one game left. She's closed in on Prasparkas who leads by one. Remember, we may only have the one game left, maybe two, uh, probably not no more than that. So every vote counts from here uh, for the girls wanting the biggest prize in footy, the Everything Essendon Player of the Year award. Uh, Georgia Nairscorn can still win it with one game as well. Uh, those are the three in contention. Georgia Clark is a bit further down in fourth. And then after there, there's a log jam between fifth all the way down to 12th and 13th, pretty much, but they're off screen. Gaylor's moved up the order, though. She is now in ninth spot and not far off is Steph Wales. Uh, from uh, Clark with seven, but she's three more ahead of J Gaylor. I don't even know what I just said there. All right, and on to next week. Uh, now, we don't really know who we're playing yet. We don't know where we're playing yet, and we don't know when we are playing yet. That is all decided tomorrow. But here are the possible options. So we're currently seventh on the ladder, but Port uh, will probably leapfrog us if they beat G GWS, which they should. So we most likely will finish in eighth spot on the ladder, meaning we play whoever finishes in fifth away from home. If Fremantle beat the Bulldogs, they will finish fifth, which means we travel to Perth. Uh, if they lose and Richmond beat Hawthorne, we will play Richmond, which honestly is the ideal option, but the least likely of the two. The most likely scenario for us is playing Fremantle in Perth. If Port somehow lose to GWS, we finish seventh and probably play Richmond, who we drew with the other week. So, uh, yeah, we're most likely playing the Dockers, who smashed us early in the year. That would that would honestly be a fun challenge, having to enact revenge away from home. Ideal world, we play Port, to be honest, so I can go see the girls live in Adelaide, but that is not going to happen. Uh, it's the Dockers or Tigers. I reckon both tough games, both winnable but massive tests. Uh, really, though, the fact that we're here is great. That, that was the benchmark for the season, making finals. Ideally, it would have been higher on the ladder, but injuries have made it really hard for us to win games we probably should have not lost in. Uh, that is all, though, for now. Stay tuned for next Sunday for my review, I'm going to say. That is uh, that is when the game should be, if it's on Saturday, uh, the day after, which I expect it to be. Make sure you like the video if you enjoyed. Uh, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and as always, go Bombers.